Welcome to Ancestral the Day on Strategic Leadership Practices and today I want to speak to you about great leadership requires great influence, mentoring. You know, mentoring today is amongst the most hottest topics in leadership. There are literally thousands of books, journals and articles dedicated to this subject. Now why is this so? The answer is that great leadership requires great influence and mentoring is one of the most effective ways of influencing followers and future leaders. Mentoring is an effective means of creating an intended real transformational change. Seeing the, or setting the strategic direction of an organization, plus mentoring is one of the most powerful ways of developing and empowering future leaders. Now the strength and future of any church or any organization lies in the heroic action of individuals who are willing to give themselves to grow their own leaders through mentoring. Now John Hawkins states in his article, Mentoring Leadership, that great leadership requires great influence. Now this is quite a profound statement because it makes us aware that leaders emerge and develop consciously and subconsciously from the influence of relationships and events they experience in life. In 1919, Ernest Hemingway, recovering from injuries from the First World War, moved to Chicago near the famous author Sherwood Anderson, who was known for helping young writers. And uh, as time went on, the two men formed a, a great friendship. The young man brought Anderson samples of his work. The veteran writer then would honestly critique Hemingway's material and offer suggestions on how to improve it. Hemingway then would return to his typewriter and diligently work dissecting Anderson's uh, suggestions. And in 1926, Hemingway published his first book. Yeah, but wait, the story doesn't end there. Sherwood Anderson moved to New Orleans where he helped the young poet William Fort publish his first book, The Sound and the Fury, which probably became America's masterpiece. Later, he helped play the playwright Thomas Wolfe and many others. Now, three of Anderson's protégés earned the Nobel Prize and four earned the Pulitzer Prize in literature. What caused Anderson to help so many young people? One of the reasons was that he himself was mentored by the great writer Theodore Dresden. Now Sherwood Anderson had great influence on growing future leaders of the literature world because he was willing to impart, to, uh, impart something of himself, his soul to others. Not only was he willing to give them his soul, but he was willing to share with up and coming writers his own gift of writing. Now the result of this was not only were the potential leaders of the literature world strengthened because of Anderson's great influence, but so was his position as a leader. One of the things that a mentor does is it allows the protege to gain a tangible image of the real world. I read a story one day about a little girl who went walking with a grandfather. And when she came home, she climbed up on her mother's knees and said, I want grandfather's eyes. Well, the rather astonished mother said, why do you want grandfather's eyes? I mean, you have such pretty eyes. And the little girl replied, I want to see things as grandfather sees them. She said, I want to see things as grandfather sees them. At such a young age, she began to realize that certain things could only be seen through the eyes of someone much wiser, a mentor. Now, in mentoring, this is first done by the mentor building a relationship with the protege. The benefit of this mentor building an open, honest relationship with the protege is that it allows the protege to expand their knowledge and transcend their own interests for the sake of the mission. Secondly, the mentor allows the protege to see the world through the eyes of much more experienced transformational leaders. And this is done by introducing the protege to colleagues and exposing them to the rigors of their profession of a transformational leader. And Anderson did this with Hemingway and his other proteges. He built a relationship with them by introducing them to his network of associates who were leaders in the literary world, allowing them to see through his eyes and their eyes and what, what could be done. Thirdly, and by uh, personal exposure to the protege to the urgencies and benefits of intended real transformational change within the organization. A mentor is better able to transfer to the protege the vision of transformational change. 
You know, mentoring gives leaders the opportunity of having great influence not only on their own generation, but also on, their, on the next generation. The impact of a mentor on the next generation to bring about transformational change in society is seen in the life of, Martin, of Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King mentor was Dr. Benjamin May who was the Dean of Morehouse College. And during this time, Dr. May became fascinated with India. He eventually visited the country three times. And on his visit, he observed firsthand how the Indian people used nonviolence resistance to win independence from the British. After a personal conference with Gandhi, he became convinced that nonviolence is was used by the weak as an active force to bring about change. In 1944, Martin Luther King entered Morehouse College with one aim to help the African American people. Uh, he was unsure of which path he should take. It was during the chapel sessions that he became influenced by Dr. May's address on non-violence activism. Through the mentoring efforts of Dr. May, Martin Luther King was able to bring about a transformational change to the society or the social structure of American culture. Transformation leaders who master the skill of mentoring will exert an influence that will spread throughout the organization they lead. And thank you for listening to this session. God bless you.